Welcome. Good morning. Well, today, for all of you out there and all of you here, we're going to be oh. talking about signs. Um, scriptures, basically, for today, most of them are going to be uh, the whole book of Jude, Revelation 1, uh, 10 through 11, um, Revelation 4, 8 through 11, and Revelation 5, 9 through 14. And then um, there's another one that I'll be mentioning that was read earlier today, uh, Ephesians 6, 10 to 13. Signs. Why signs? Because in these last days, there's going to be all kinds of signs. Signs that we need to be paying attention to. Signs that need to be concerned about. <clears throat> what are all these different types of signs? Well, <clears throat> one that we can look at is we're going to be hearing rumors of wars and wars and many other things. Uh, the seasons are going to change. All kinds of things are going to be happening. One of the biggest things that I'm seeing right now on the news, in fact, today I even read where the U.S., along with uh, the help of the South Korea, brought B-1 bombers into Seoul, South Korea, on standby for what North Korea is doing. Here's our rumors of wars, right there. North Korea is threatening to uh, attack the U.S. Cities like um, Nancy uh, said something Seattle. about seeing it in Seattle. Uh, I was reading yesterday, L.A., Chicago, and New York, and Denver even was mentioned yeah. in all of this. North Korea is getting ready to start attacking these areas. So, the U.S. in response brought the B-1 bombers in to Seoul, South Korea to let uh, everybody know we are ready. Um, Trump is saying, President Trump is saying, no more bailouts for health insurance. Putting us top of that. Uh, U.S. Navy ship firing warning shots at Iranian ships because they're where they're not supposed to be. Uh, I just mentioned North Korea's threats uh, to the U.S. Spread of false doctrine, spiritual warfare. Nancy just got a text about Christmas and Easter uh, being this and being that and some of the things that it's saying about it. Yes, this is all through spiritual warfare. These are things that I have talked about in the past on Christmas and also on Resurrection Day. Uh, that These things are out there. Yes, they are. Easter itself is a um, Satan holiday, satanic holiday, but at that particular time, and they're bringing this up at that time, to go against the resurrection of Christ, to be against what we really are celebrating during this season. Same with Christmas. And yes, the Christmas tree is authentic, but Christmas itself, with the way the world has made it, isn't. It's satanic. But we also look at that as the time, the birth of Christ. Um, the word says there's going to be families against families, backbiters, um, stabbing in the back, going against each other in all means. Greed is heavy enough. And so these are some of the things that we're going to be looking at through uh, the book of Jude. This 
morning I'm going to be doing more reading out of the Word and comments out of the Word than I normally do. But I feel that this right now is so, so terribly strong, so terribly, terribly needed. And if we don't start standing up and standing firm and doing what God has called us to do, we're going to fail. I, for one, don't plan to fail. I plan to keep my focus to the east and on him, and him alone, and him completely, and nothing more. That's where all of us need to be. Uh, contending earnestly for the faith. We're to contend for the faith earnestly. We are to be that Christ in that Christ likeness that was mentioned earlier in uh, Ephesians and we'll talk about again briefly we need to put faith ahead of everything else and uh, this is one of the things that Jude is trying to get across to us is we need to all the time be in the word. We need to all the time be contending and earnestly and honestly <clears throat> for the faith of Jesus Christ. Um, starting with verse 1, Jude, a bondservant of Jesus Christ, the brother of James, to those who are called signified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ. Romans 8 28 is another good one. We have all been called by the Lord. Every one of us. 828 doesn't mean just being called to be a pastor or a minister or a prophet or an evangelist or any of that. He has called every single one of us. Peace, mercy, and love be multiplied to you. Contend for the faith. Beloved, while it is very diligent, I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation. I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which once was once for all delivered to saints. For certain men have crept in unnoticed, who long ago were marked out for this condemnation, ungodly men who turn the grace of our God into lewdness and deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, this is going on all the time. These type of people are coming into our churches, into our families, into our communities to turn everything for what they want. To turn everything for money. To turn everything to make them look big and important and that's not what it's about um, contending earnestly for faith uh, for Jewish readers who were probably Jewish Christians these references were virtual code names for to Version and rebellion against God. They were as well known a warning then as skull and bones, marking poison for our today. Jude was warning his readers that like those who had caused so much evil for the ancient Hebrews, mockers, false teachers, were now infiltrating the church, poisoning it with air. However, the author avoided naming names, perhaps because his readers 
might have faced reprisals if he had done so. There's a group known as Skull and Bones today. If you look at this group and the ones that are a part of it and look at the history for the last several decades in this country, you will see a lot of skull and bones poisoning to the country. Yes, Satan has had it, his run for too long. <clears throat> we need to start again standing up and standing firm on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. At any rate, the oblique way in which Jude makes these references is, I, is an ironic return to Judas Iscariot. The danger is inside the camp. Jude warned, but you don't always know who it is. Okay, inside the camp would be, it could be inside of our families, inside of our church, our community. And we don't know who it is. Sometimes we do, but most of the time we don't know who it is. And just like the disciples at the Last Supper, the readers of Jude would, Jude would be asking, which of us is it? Is it you? Is it you? Is it you? Who is it? Little has changed in the 2,000 years since Jude was written. Believers still need to hear, need to be on their guard against doctrinal error and persuasive teachers who lead people away from the truth about Jesus. In reading this letter, we are reminded that Christianity is no game. The Old Testament, the bills mentioned, rebels mentioned, and Jude came to very bad ends. So will today's false teachers and those who follow them. Jude is a very sobering book. It warns us in stark terms not to play with sin. I don't know how much stronger that could be made. But the thing of it is, today, look at all the ones that are playing with sin. Look at all the ones that are going against God. Look at all of your ones that are teaching us false doctrine. How they are taking the Bible and rewriting it and rewriting it. In fact, I just read the, uh, a few days ago, there's now another new version of the Bible that is more, they claim is more for today and can decipher better than anything else. Well, you know, it tells us in Revelation, it tells us in Galatians and Genesis and a number of other places, we are not to change a single word, add or subtract anything from God's word. And there is so much of that happening today because people want to, don't want their toes stepped on. They don't want their feelings stepped on. They're where their feelings right here where they can be easily hit and hurt. It's got to end. We have got to take and get on our knees before the Lord Jesus Christ and start praying in a way that we have never prayed before. We have to have our focus to the east. We have to have our focus on him completely and totally. Day in, day out. Never ending. Our focus has to be first on him and foremost. Uh, reading starting with verse 5 examples from history but I want to remind you so you once knew this that the Lord having
saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe, and the angels who did not keep their proper domain, but left at their own abode. He has res uh, reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in a similar manner <coughs> of these having given themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh are set forth as an example suffering the vengeance of eternal fire so see all this homosexual and transgender and everything else needs to come to a stop there's no place in God's house for any of it now I'm not saying we won't welcome them in to hear the word we won't encourage them to continue the lifestyle they're in but we will encourage them to change and become godly people to hear the word understand the word and leave that type of lifestyle because it's not allowed in God's presence false teachers are described and condemned in verses uh, 8 through 16 likewise also these dreamers defile the flesh reject authority and speak evil of dignitaries yet Michael the archangel in contending with the devil when he disputed about the body of Moses dared not bring against him a reveling accusation but said the Lord rebuke you but these speak evil of whatever they do do not know and whatever they know naturally like group beasts in these things they corrupt themselves Woe to them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, have run greedily in the air of Adam for profit, and perished in the rebellion of Korah. These are spots in their love feast, while they feast with you without fear only themselves they are clouds of clouds without water carried about by the winds they autumn trees without fruit twice dead pulled up by the roots raging with waves of the sea foaming up their own shame wandering stars for whom is reserved the blackness of the darkness forever now when I talk here about um, the feasting that is like uh, referred to the time of communion the breaking of bread see if we are living the lifestyle of these and we're breaking bread it's just like Judas Iscariot when he broke bread at the Last Supper and then turned Christ over to his enemies. This is the same thing. So be watchful. We need to be watchful of these type in our congregations, in the temples. Here's something to consider. Pornography exposes more than skin. Jude connects the illicit sex to Sodom and Gomorrah with dramatic powers 
Dominic Powers, who is the enemy. At Ephesians 6, 10 through 13, which uh, Phil read earlier today. The revival, the real evil behind porn is not that it is so shameful or unfulfilling, though it is, like clouds without water. Nor is the evil that the uh, peddling of raw sex and lustful pleasure makes someone else rich, though it does. Judy hints at the real source of power and profit behind the porn market, demonic evil that traffics in human sex. So, this demonic spirit is what is running all of this. All these people, transgenders, homosexuals, so on and so forth. It is the demonic spirit that has taken over them, that leads them into these situations, that leads them into these areas, that leads even false pastors or false teachers or prophets that tell you about such things as Christmas and as Easter and bringing out the satanic parts of it and capitalizing on the satanic parts of it instead of the real reasons, the real things that we really need to know and understand so that we might have the joy and the peace of the Lord. Verse 14, Now Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about men also, saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment on all, to convert, convict all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have committed in the ungodly way, and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Stay in the love of God. These are gamblers, complainers, walking according to their own lust, and the mouth graceful words, flattering people to gain advantage. But you, beloved, remember the words which are spoken before by the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ. How they have told you that there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lust. These are exceptional persons who cause division, not having the spirit. See, again, we're talking about people that are going to come in, come creeping in. They're going to be sweet talking. They're going to be enticing. They're going to be using God's word to make them look good to make what they are saying sound like it's coming from God's word when it isn't. These are the people that will take and tell you what you want to hear instead of telling you what you need to hear, what you have to hear. They are going to tell you what makes you feel good. But you, beloved, oh, hold on, I'm going to move down here to some uh, notes that I have here. Sad fallouts are inevitable. In today's age of acceptance and tolerance, it is not easy or popular to disagree with others. It seems that one, the one truth everyone must bow to is that everybody has the right to their own beliefs. 
and what's true for one may not be true for another. To suggest that someone could be wrong, or worse, to claim that there is such a thing as ultimate absolute truth is highly expensive to our culture. Well, we see that all the time. Truth is, and I'll say it right now, truth is such a thing as ultimate. It's absolute truth. It is the truth of the word of God. There is no other true truth than the Amen. truth of the word of God. And we need to start understanding that. We need to be hearing the truth of the word. We need to be showing the truth of the word. We need to be acting and walking as in the truth of the word. But how can everything be true? That seems to be a contradiction in logic. If we agree with Webster that truth can be find, defined as fact, the state of something being the case, or as actually actuality the body of real things, events, or facts, Jesus claimed to be the truth not just the truth. He regularly spoke of telling the truth to his listeners. Um, but as Jude demonstrates, not all who begin to follow God's truth finish well. Here's some thoughts. When Israel fled from Egypt, some disbelieved and died. Some angels turned away from God and were banished from their positions. Sodom and Gomorrah stand as evidence that sin can bring about destruction. Cain, through selfishness, greed, hatred, and murder, Balaam gave in to error and lost his clarity regarding the truth of God. Korah mistakenly opposed God's leaders and paid for it dearly. God's people are not called to be bigots who flaunt their connection with the truth, but are called to be loyal to the truth of Christ and we should challenge people to avoid anything less than what God offers. Think about that. We're to avoid everything that is not in God's Word. We cannot be a truth, truth squad inflated with our own importance, but neither are we to be Melanchostas who will agree to anything for the sake of peace. No, we must proclaim God's truth with mercy to those who will perish without it. Only we can do that. We've got some signs to say only Jesus saves. No, we cannot save. We can't save nobody. But we could be that bright and shining light. We could be so Christ-like that people will see it. They will see that we're always that way and they will desire to have what we have. As they desire to have what we have and when they see that Christ-likeness in us, then they will come before Christ and allow Christ to save them. Again, only Jesus saves. We don't. In closing, verse 20, Do you, beloved, 
building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Right here it says we are to pray in the Spirit. Praying in the Spirit is that of praying in tongues. Keep yourself in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And on some have compassion, making a distinction, but others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating every, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you flawless before the presence of his holy his glory with exceeding joy to God our Savior who alone is wise the glory and majesty dominion and power and now and forever amen see we need to be in prayer continually we need to be in God's word continually we need to be understanding what it is that he desires not our desires not our wants, but His. God gives us visions. These visions are not necessarily done immediately. After all, this ministry right here today was a vision 28 years ago. This ministry isn't quite 14 years old. Therefore, it took a long time for this vision to come about vision of the tent revival in 2008 took almost two years for that to transpire. Another tent revival in 2014 only took months. Visions don't always come immediately. Sometimes they do. But in most cases there's preparation that God has to prepare us for in order for this vision to come about. God has to prefer, prepare every one of us to do what He wants us to do. Not what we want, but what He wants. We've got to start opening up these ears. We've got to start opening up this heart and this mind and the spirit to hear what God is telling us. To let us know what His visions and His desires in our life are for us to do. Are we keeping our focus on Him? Are we listening to Him? Are we doing as He has asked? Are we being obedient unto Him? These are all questions that we can answer.